Hey guys, welcome back to Unite. Today I'm going to do a video about, man, a change that I didn't think was going to be as good as it actually was, that being Gengar. So let's talk about Gengar. This patch, they increased the damage, uh, so the base special attack has been increased by 30. And the boosted auto also does more damage. And I was looking at that in the patch notes, I'm like, this could be just enough to kind of bring Gengar back into a playable state. And then I actually tried it, and man, Gengar's back. Like, I don't think it's as strong as the original Gengar, which was just completely overpowered. But this is enough that I actually feel like I can play Gengar again. So, it's just really, really strong now, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit in this video. Now, if you actually look at Gengar's special attack stat, it is pretty high. I believe at 15 it goes over 700. So, 30 over every level doesn't seem like a whole lot initially, but it makes a big difference in specifically the early game. So, Ghastly has always been pretty slow when it comes to the jungle clear, which uh, you, you want your speedster to be in the jungle, typically. That's just the best place for them, so they can be uh, overleveled and then get all that juicy damage onto your opponents. Gengar is really bad on a lane, it's just throwing that out there. <laughs> so, his only point was... The only point of Gengar was to be in the jungle, but your jungle clear was very slow. And when you finally did get to level 5, there just wasn't- the power spike wasn't actually that big compared to other junglers, like, uh, yeah, even Cinderace, which doesn't get a move at level 5, still just did more damage, and it was very frustrating to to attempt to play Gengar before this patch, but now the the damage increase is considerable in the early game. So much so that the, the clear is like a good 10 plus seconds faster. Like it is noticeably faster now. And once you're level 5, you can start putting on some real damage. And it, I didn't think it would be that significant, but it actually is. You don't have to be as leveled to do what Gengar is supposed to do. And that is, you just assassinate things. You blow stuff up very quickly. And I, this is such a good change. Because you still have to play very safe and calculated. You can't just dive in on anything. <laughs> And you'll, that's how you just lose. It's not it's not Cinderace where you just stay in the back and click buttons. So I do think Cinderace is still the, like, the superior jungler for that reason. It's just more consistent. However, Gengar is now in a place where you can actually use it and it not feel like you're at a big deficit. <laughs> kind of like, like Talonflame, you know? Uh, Talonflame's used a fair bit in competitive like tournaments and stuff. And I actually think Gengar could be a viable alternative to Talonflame, even though Talonflame is probably still better at sniping objectives. Uh, Gengar's not bad at it, but it's not as safe at doing it, <laughs> so there, there is that to keep in mind. Um, now this doesn't mean Gengar is just like completely overpowered, it, it's really not, and I'm going to explain some of the issues with the new improved uh, Gengar <laughs> that is available now. The, the biggest issue with Gengar is it kind of does one thing. It's very specialized. So I run Shadow Ball Dream Eater. I haven't tried the other build yet. And I, uh, based on how the Dream Eater build feels, I really don't have any need to try the other build. It just, it feels very strong. You're, the damage output is just where it needs to be to be very effective in combat. However, that highly specialized 
nature of Gengar means your item choices are very limited. So I run the triple special attack bonus item set, which is Shell Bell, Choice Specs, and Wise Glasses. I think Wise Glasses is a must on Gengar. And Shell Bell is really strong when you're trying to kite around, wait out your opportunities, and just throw out Shadow Balls, waiting for that opportunity to get your, uh, get your knockout, since you can't just dive in. Talonflame can actually get out when you dive in. Gengar cannot. So you have to play safer, and the, I am getting the high damage with the three special attack items on it. Which, if you notice, uh, Talonflame builds, a lot of them just have like Muscle Band as, as their only offensive item. And so they can run Buddy Barrier to help in team fights, and they can have like Focus Band for added survivability. It's, it's a lot more flexible. And you don't have to just play full damage. You're not 100% relied upon for only damage. Like, you can do a little bit more in team fights and such. Whereas Gengar, I feel like you, you have to run the offense items. Like, you, you really do to get that full, the full damage output that Gengar needs to actually destroy things. So, in that sense, I do think Gengar is worse than Talonflame because you have to basically only do one set of items that is not very strong unless you want to run score comp which i guess score comp gengar is better now <laughs> and that's the thing and that that was the only way that gengar is viable i think gengar now can just play as a just a damage jungler <laughs> now but still it requires this specific item set to get the damage that Gengar has been needing to be able to do. Which I, I think that is kind of the biggest drawback to playing Gengar in the current meta. That being said, it actually works in this meta. And at least in ranked. I don't know if a full stack would ever use this thing. <laughs> but it is very strong in just like... I, I was running a three stack and some of the, the background footage is going to be these uh, battles here. Gengar is really doing a lot in these uh, these fights. In, in case you were watching any of it, <laughs> you might just be listening to me rambling about Gengar. But th this is the place that Gengar, I think, needed to be. And I'm very, I'm very glad to see that Gengar is finally in a place where I feel comfortable using it. Because Gengar, Gengar was my main. And I know I played the broken thing back at the beginning of the game, whatever. I played it um, after the nerf for a good while until it just stopped working. So I, I switched over to Shadow Ball Dream Eater like right before the big nerf to the other build. And just to like kind of familiarize myself with it. And it's what I use now. The I think it's the superior build now for sure. Even though it's very hard to use, you got to place your shots very well. <laughs> and that, if you noticed in the footage here, a lot of my shadow balls and hypnosis just completely whiff. It it happens a lot. <laughs> and even with that, the, uh, the extra damage just makes it a little more forgiving. You can kind of play into play around your misses some. And uh, of course, I'm just used to it because I have played Gengar. Gengar's my most played character, so I, I just have figured out how to work around all that inconsistency of my aiming. <laughs> oh, but it is really exciting to see that Gengar is, in my opinion, playable again. Because I, I really did not. I did not enjoy uh, trying to climb up the ranks and as the, the nerfed Gengar, for people to just, uh, as time went on, it got harder and harder to play Gengar because more people figured out how to play against it. And now, I can actually play it again. It's just, it's so nice. And we finally have another option as a jungler. I can, I can switch over from Greninja because Greninja is my main jungler. Just... I can finally go back to Gengar. It's so fantastic.
So yeah, I, I think Gengar's in a good place. I don't think they should nerf it <laughs> because of how specialized it is. It, it just requires very specific things to do the, to do the scary stuff. It requires a very specific set. And I, I like that. I'm, I'm actually okay with that because I really didn't have any issues running just full offense on this thing getting those knockouts being helpful in team fights even without a buddy barrier <laughs> and with the unite move that's just not great at team fights it's it's really something okay one more thing i want to like specifically showcase here is at minute like th at like three minutes here uh you're gonna see uh, me versus this absol on the uh, other team and i believe the absol's their jungler and just watch this interaction here in the center <laughs> as we just encounter each other. Let's see, I'm I'm level 13 and he's level 13 as well. He uses this Unite move and still manages to not take me out. Of course, one of his moves did whiff. Uh, it, I saw it hit the uh, wall there. Gengar used to not be able to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now, Gengar would have exploded in that scenario. He just would not have been able to do uh, the damage, especially if you're trying to run a score comp build. It, there's no way. <laughs> no way. But th this is what I'm talking about. Like, Gengar just can play the game again. You don't have to rely on just playing sneaky score comp. You can actually play offense, kind of like a jungler should. <laughs> yeah, like, C Cinderace does, does that very well, and uh, I think Gengar can now actually sort of do it, it itself that is just really really awesome to see this change i i think this might be i don't know if this is the best buff in the patch but it really does feel like the best buff in the patch to me but that could just be because i'm very comfortable playing gengar anyway i think i'm gonna call that on this video i should do a video of Duraladon, which by the way is really cool. Uh, <clears throat> Duraladon just feels like a really weird slow center race. I'm just gonna say that right now. Just does a lot of damage. Very fun indeed. Might might be a little too much damage, but we'll we'll see how uh, how it ends up if they end up nerfing it or not. I have no idea. But that's gonna be for a future video. Maybe I'll do a live commentary battle with it at some point. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.